16th of the 7th, Paradise Now, Church, Brisbane, another lovely day. we just got to keep things in line, haven't we? We have to keep everything in order. And uh, the slightest thing gets out of order, you're going to end up at another destination. And always remember, uh, the pastor's word, in, in, whether it's a church or a ministry, it's the leader's word that, that is established, not the leader's wife. Not the elder or the deacon. It's the one leading the charge. He's the one that sees. Just that little bit more than the followers. That's why the Lord put the leader man there as a leader. Amen. Otherwise he would put someone else there, wouldn't he? He would have put the wife there. Or he would have put a stranger there. <laughs> We would have put a compromiser there. Someone who's shown partiality to the flesh. Family first sort of thing. Well, I can tell you now, this pastor is not family first. Never have been, never will be. Because I got the message from the Lord real quick. Real quick. Are you coming or not? That was 36 years ago. Let's go. Let's get out of this town right now and that was it I just dropped it all and went very few people these days have the backbone or the love or the intentions to do that which is why they just keep going round on the tarmac you ever seen a plane going round on the tarmac there's something wrong with it and it just keeps going round and soon and then there's another plane over on another runway and it just takes off that's the one that's keen to do what Jesus said. They've never lost their first love, if they've ha ever had one. They've never lost their first love. And my first love, real love, was Jesus. And always will be. To the day of death. Come what may, regardless to what churches, ministers, Pretend churches or ministers or people, men and women or children. I don't give a rat what they think of me. I'm at that age now. It really doesn't matter. I'm on the home run. What people think of me is what they think of me. And they'll pay the price for it. Because they'll be judged for it. We'll be judged for every thought and deed. It's no skin off my nose what people think about me. I've got no control over that. That's on their head. So we need to remember that. Don't get off the, uh, the beaten track. Stay on the narrow road. And the narrow road speaks one thing, doesn't it? Restrictions. Restrictions big time. Right? We're pining over the flesh. We're pining over the uh, people of the first birth. I tell you what, there, there's something not right. Because we've got a new family, and it's a spiritual family, and they have Jesus as their priority. So let's remember it, and then we'll take ground. We'll, pro, uh, we'll prosper in the spirit. We'll progress. Otherwise, it's just going to be a dull religion for you going to be like, uh, who are you to tell me? Now listen here, little man. Don't worry about Jezebel. She ain't got nothing to say. She, she doesn't even uh, exist in the equation. It's what Elijah says that matter. And Elisha. Not Jezebel. You know, he just laugh at that. That's Jezebel's counsel, it doesn't even exist. Even though she thought she was a teacher. She 
thought she was some teacher, like Joyce Moore. Thought she was someone that had the goods, but didn't have the goods. Right? What they call the shots? No, not, not in my house and not in this church will anyone ever call the shots except me. And people can think of that what they like. Okay, what's going on around us? Oh, there's mayhem, there's, there's betrayal, there's hell, or should I say prelude to the living hell going on around us. Right? And it's sending hundreds of millions of dollars over to Ukraine, plus armed vehicles. And what does Ukraine say? More. With a rebel yell, they cry more, more, more. This Roman Catholic country. More, more, more. You never hear of anything else coming out of their mouth. They just want more, more, more. Right? But yet, what have we got here? On our homeland. Right? I tell you, you got homelessness. You got unemployment. You got families living in cars. Hey? You got people being ripped off with their wages. We got our own war going on here with youth crime. And what's, what's happening? Where, where's all the equipping of the people to stop this garbage? Hey? It's bad management. Bad management. That's what it is. It's bad management. Right? These politicians shouldn't be in the job. They're not prioritising properly. Right? The Lord even says that, that if a man doesn't look after his own house, what is he? Well, that's the same with the Prime Minister. This country is his house. He ain't looking after the land. He ain't looking after the pensioners. He ain't looking after the mentally sick. He ain't looking after the, the single mothers. He ain't looking up. He's not doing that. Right? He couldn't be in right standing with the Lord. Right? Old Albanese, why do you think the Lord spoke to him with a prophet's writing? He got the message. I gave it to him. I put it in his hand. Now it's up to him what he does with it. And we'll see where Elbo lands himself in hell or heaven. But it's not looking good. I don't think the end will be good for him. He's down there where I was having a cup of tea and, and the Lord made it clear it, it, this was the time of visitation for him. Because I had a, one of his... Uh, minders clear the way for me he said to these other people excuse me he said there you go Paul after he, he received my literature and then I, I just walked through the midst and then gave the literature to Mr um, Elbow Mr Albanese he said there you go that's for you and he took it and put it in his jacket. So, that was a golden opportunity for him to, to lock in to some clarity of mind, to clear thinking, and, and the ability to prioritise properly by receiving Jesus. Because Elmo hasn't received Jesus. He might attend the church now and then, you know, maybe just to keep up Appearances, hey? Go down the Anglican church on one of them, you know, just like old Johnny Howard. Hey? I wouldn't trust Johnny Howard as far as I could throw him. He's propped up in the Anglican church, next minute he's shaking hands with the Masons. Come on. I tell you what, you don't have to be much. You don't have to have much uh, integrity or character to be a politician. Actually, you don't need any. 
So, what this government needs to do is tidy up their backyard ferns. And then they can think about dishing it up elsewhere and sending millions to Muslim countries like Indonesia. Many a time they've been uh, found to be sending money to countries that are uh, aiding and abetting terrorism. The same money. So we're propping up terrorists. Ah, not good. Hey? Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a shame to any country. Everyone said. Amen. Oh, thank you for that. Hey? A bloke just recently, this is what we've got. We've got our own war here. You've got a bloke, Gary uh, Maidman, blew up his own house. And it's, they've got good reason to think that the, there's remains there of a person and it could be him. Because he couldn't pay the mortgage. He, he was on his own. He's doing it hard mentally, see? This is the old devil in action working him over. And uh, it wasn't a bad little, little spread he had there. He had a work, work truck and a car. And, but he was struggling there to, uh, to pay his, uh, his mortgage payments. And they doubled. And that was the line. That was it. That was the, uh, the straw that broke the camel's back, you know. That finished him. Next minute, the neighbours hear this bomb go off. Just blew the place to smithereens. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, they said they, they never heard anything like it. They could hear it for miles. They thought it was a bomb dropped or something. Right? And uh, that's another example, isn't it, of, of the uh, uh, World Monetary Fund and, and uh, the banks and Fair dealing, honesty, it's not there. Don't look for it. It's not there. <laughs> we, look, we can get bogged down in the positive thinking and the Joyce Meyer and the Benny Hinn and we're thinking positive and we're doing this. Well, why didn't Jesus do that? Well, you know, you've got to think the best of people. Well, Jesus didn't do that. You go and read Matthew 24. And tell me if Jesus, the way he spoke, was he thinking the best of those Pharisees? He called them dogs and whitewashed tombs. Hey? Filthy on the inside, clean on the outside. Uh, he, he called them everything. He used the whole chapter. So we just have to get it right, you know. We just have to get into to the beat, you know. We have to get that march left, 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 right, left, left. Hey? Not missing a step. Not getting out of step. You know, you can get out of step easily. You, you can give precedence to your family. They don't want to go here or do this or do that. And I'll go with them then. And, and, and you're out of step when you get back. You've got to hang in there. You've got to be that slave. And no one wants to be a slave. Do they? Well, the good news is you're either a slave to God or you're a slave to the devil. Oh no, I'm, I'm no slave to the devil. Oh really? Well, a slave to the devil is someone that doesn't do what Jesus says. Now you know if you're a slave to the devil. We can't walk in two directions at the same time. We've got to properly place our priorities. We're dealing with God and man here. Every time I look at the narrow road and the wide road, I think of God and man. Which way are you going to go? Hey? So, uh, time to forget the past and the people thereof. Move on. To higher ground. 
Otherwise, we'd just stay on the tarmac. You know, the world, they, the world writes songs. I was only looking at this the other day and, and listening to the songs, different songs, and I'm thinking to myself, you know, their songs are mostly about humans and loss and heartache. Um, prioritising dead loved ones. Or, or missing them. Uh, they're sort of like dancing with their eyes closed but still seeing them, you know? Ingrained in their mind, being prioritised over their creator. Right? And the Lord makes it very clear that in Jeremiah 17 um, if we just go there for a tick he clears all this up you know that's what I love about the scriptures Uh, the scriptures make everything very clear don't they you know they they give you answers not like the songs of the world oh whinging and moaning and everyone oh you know And they might even start crying. Like people cry today and they don't even know the person that died and it's on TV. Something not right in the head, you know what I mean? They're not all there. Jeremiah 17, the verses 5. Cursed is the man and the woman who trust in men and women and make flesh their strength whose heart departs from the Lord that's how you depart from the Lord that's called departure from the Lord when you're putting your trust in humans and you wonder why you're racked with worry and pain and confusion and dementia's setting in at an early age you wonder why Come on now. That word there is cursed. Cursed. That means troubled to no end. That's what cursed means. Troubled to no end. Continually troubled in the mind. Verse 6. Jeremiah 17. For he shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when good comes, but shall inhabit the past places in the wilderness in a salt land which is not inhabited. Will not see when the good preacher comes. Blind. Just blinded. Blinded by the light. Blinded by the light of Lucifer. The most beautiful cherub of all. They won't see it. See, they can't. They're blinded by their own curriculum, which is trusting in humanity rather than trusting in the Creator. Totally blinded to the truth. Thinking, oh no, well, well that preacher, he's just mean. I mean, he's better than Leroy Brown, that bloke. He's just this and he's just that. You know? Yeah. He, he's a bad person. That's why no one goes to his church. Because he's, he's just this hardline preacher that doesn't make exceptions for sin. Sorry, no, I'm not. <coughs> Shall not see when good comes. See? Shall not see when good comes. They don't know. 
good when it bites them on the nose. So uh, the Lord gives us the solution, doesn't he, to the blindness and, and the, the perishing and the throb in the wilderness dying off. He gives us the answer all the time. He says, me, I am the way. Me, no one else, I am the way. <laughs> Not anyone else. It, it, a lot of people think, oh, I'm going to save my family. I'm going to save my uncle. You ain't going to save Jack. Because they're not even going to get saved unless Father calls. Amen. Jesus can't save them. He's waiting for Father to call them. And for that to happen, he has to see want proof. <laughs> and that's got to come from them. You know? Oh, but God is merciful. God is gracious. Well... That's another, that's another series altogether, isn't it? Right? God is not gracious to the proud. He said he lays them down. He headbutts them. Peter said, puts them down. The proud, he abases them. I may talk abasement. But to the humble, another story. He gives power to the humble. And then they're not whinging about the demons have got them and they, they're trying their best and they're overcome, trying to overcome them. Oh, we're, we're, we're transitioning. You know, we're, we're in the process. Well, Jesus is not in the process. He's just going to come at a time that nobody knows. So there goes your process. Transitioning. He already told us that now's the time. Now. That's the time to be ready for his coming now. Because we might not have tomorrow. Hey. A bloke with a re, uh, track record of repeat domestic violence, uh, domestic violent attacks on, on, on women, uh, they charged him, and just listen to the charge, a $500 fine. You think that's bad? Well listen to the end result. It was overturned in Townsville. It was overturned. Right? And you wonder why. Lawlessness will abound. Lawlessness will abound. In the last days. Right? They're calling good evil and evil good. Women trying to run the house and men, they're just like gutless wonders. They're just like little Ahabs. And the women are calling the shots. It makes me sick to my stomach. I tell you now. Right? Just like men sitting under women pastors and women teachers. It makes me sick to my gut. I'm not ashamed to say it. I'm proud to say it. Because I'm a man. Let's move into the message today. We're in the 44th battalion, no, 44th part of the kiss. It's best to kiss the Lord, isn't it? Kiss the Son, lest He destroy you. Right? Psalm 2, verse 1. 
2, verse 1. Why do the nations rage and the people plot a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens shall laugh, the Lord shall hold them in derision. Psalm 2, 5. Then he shall speak to them in his, <coughs> in his wrath <coughs> and distress them in his deep displeasure. Yet I have set my king on my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree the Lord has said to me, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance. The ends of the earth for your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron and shall dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel. Now therefore, be wise, O kings. Be instructed, you judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Psalm 2.12 Kiss the son, lest he be angry and you perish in the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all those who put their trust. We're doing trust, aren't we? In, in the last couple of months, we've been eyeballing trust. Right? It's all been about trust. Trust, trust, trust in the Lord. Everyone has tasted what it's like not to be trusted. Somewhere along the line. Before we come to the Lord or after we come to the Lord. It's not a good time. It's an insult. And that's what it is to the Lord. You're insulting Him. And, and what makes it even more disgusting is you're, you're putting a trust in a created being rather than or even a created thing rather than the creator our wonderful Lord right? you're not acknowledging his authority and power right? that's the same with a man and a wife you know if the, the wife doesn't acknowledge them the husband's authority and power and position, the man is insulted. He's offended and he's wounded. And that doesn't make for a good house. It makes very shaky. So we need to remember these little things as we go along. So that we're rejoicing in the Lord always. Right? So let's go into the 44th part. We're going to Psalm 34 because we've been getting our kisses from there. Right? We've been getting all these kisses and we're up to the 19th kiss. And there's plenty more to come, I believe. Right? Plenty more to come. We kiss the sun. And he kisses us back with all these blessings. Psalm 34 verse 18. The Lord is near to those who have, have a broken heart and save such as have a contrite spirit. We dealt with that last week. Hey? So we know that, that we, we have an omni present one watching out for us. So we go into verse 19 today. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of some of them. Many are the afflictions. How many? Many. Many are the afflictions. But everyone is whinging because they've got one affliction. Maybe two. But many, they only got one or two because they're religious. The righteous have many. 
many afflictions. And boy, don't I know that one. I know that scripture personally. <laughs> many, many are the afflictions. of the righteous but the Lord delivers him out of them all you see that this is all brought on initiated by the kids we're kissing the Lord we're obeying the Lord we're loving the Lord we're rejoicing in the Lord we're treasuring the Lord we're delighting in the Lord delighting ourselves in the Lord and then he turns around and delivers us out of all our afflictions. Not some of them. So the Lord forever makes people of the earth, church to otherwise, liars. And not only that, uh, shows them they're ignorant of his way and, and uh, him. Because they've got all these afflictions and all these problems and they can't seem to shake them. Well, they need to run a check and see if they're in right standing with God. Because <laughs> it's the righteous. The righteous. The afflictions of the righteous. Not the afflictions of the worldly. Not the afflictions of the family first people. Not the afflictions of the religious. Not the affliction of the Roman Catholics or the Pope. The righteous. Those who are born of God. No man or woman involved. No human involved. Born of God. Right? That's when we become righteous. We, we take on the righteousness of Father through the blood of Jesus. Through what Jesus has done. And then if we don't walk forward and... Uh, show forth the praises of him who brought us out of the darkness into the glorious light we're just like a fruitless tree and the fruitless tree is uprooted and pulled up by the roots or cut down one or the other but they both end up in the fire and everyone said amen, amen. see and then we go on a bit deeper we're getting down to the bone of things in the married jail in Psalm 34 and 20. He guards all his bones. Not one of them is broken. <laughs> he guards all his bones. I can't say I've had a broken, broken bone in my body. But, I mean, he guards all his bones. I mean, he's got... Everything covered. Hey? Every bone in your body. You're not going to get that from any human or religion. Look, you can walk the Kokoda Trail until you die there. You, you can go down the Gold Coast, put a pack on your back and uh, take a snack pack with you. It ain't going to change the joke. No. Nothing to compare with this. If, we, if they just kissed the Lord, if they just did what the Lord said, right? if we'd only take time to consider what the Lord said, no longer slaves of sin, but slaves of God. We need to look at that word slave, you know? Because that comes into the, oh, this is too hard realm, you know? Slave. Surely God don't want you to be like that. I've mentioned that to some ministers over the decades and they've said to me, oh now, well we're children of God now. I, I no longer call you uh, servants, I call you friends. Okay. Yeah, one sugar with the tea, please. <laughs> One sugar with the tea, level teaspoon. Don't rock me out with the sugar. And make sure it's strong and make sure it's hot. Otherwise, forget it. And don't leave any tea in the saucer. Because I don't like that either. Okay, you got the message? Okay, all right. And a dash of speed and a smile. Off you go. Quick! And we should be able to do that 
nicely. Someone said that to me, it would be yes. You know what I mean? Because it's a great thing to serve. It, it, a great person can take orders. You know, not from an idiot, but a great person can take orders without jumping up and down. That's how you know if you're great. A great person sees serving as a great thing. That's how you know you're great. A great person lives for the Lord. That's how you know you're great. But the world has a whole different thing going. There's that great gap between what the world says is great. You know, a lot of people thought Superman was great. And now he, he's in a wheelchair. And, you know, Muhammad Ali, you know, he, he was stinging like a bee for a while. And now he, he's shaking all over. Right? But he said that he was, um, what did he call himself? I am the great one or something. I don't even remember. What did he say? He's the greatest of all time. Dear me. You know? They all think they're great until they get on and in age, uh, dementia starts setting in. They no longer can pluck the guitar and beat the drum. And they start getting all wrinkly, you know. And everything starts to sag. <laughs> and all the saggy sea, sea hags. They're all trying to capture the, the youth again. Trouble to no end, pills galore, you know. It's, it's, a, it's a sad situation. But you can't tell them. So. It's, they're, uh, they're not willing, you know, they, they don't want, they don't have that want for it. They're not bearing that fruit worthy of God letting them repent. So they can't go anywhere. And then the devil uses them to waylay those who uh, are on fire or, or, or those who are diligent in the Lord. He'll, he'll use that one to waylay that, the other one and drag them down and stomp all over them in the end. Now Jesus was very clear, if they don't want to come, you keep going. Sorry. No, I'm not. Though none may come, I still will follow. If they want to lag behind, you, you can't do nothing about it. You've got to keep going forward. You know? You don't want to be like Billy. You know, Billy, don't be a hero. Don't be a fool with your life. Billy, don't be a hero, don't be a fool with your life. Yeah, you're going to be the hero and lay your life down for your friend who doesn't want to follow Jesus. Dumb and dumber. Because that's not going to change anything. There's only going to be more loss, and that's your song. <laughs> hey? Then there's two lost, hell bound. There was only one before. See? So um, it's easier to pull a man off a chair, standing on a chair, yank him down, than it is to lift a man up onto the chair. And that's what we face. As ministers of the uh, covenant of reconciliation, Many are the afflictions of the righteous. All, he just said many, and that's many. It could be all brands, you know, not necessarily just cornflakes. It can be all brand, it can be, you know, um, cocoa pops. All kinds of afflictions, you know. Many are they. But we have to deal with them in accordance to the Lord, not according to our own understanding or 
or some other human's understanding or what they would say today, a nice understanding or kind. You know, you see the world, they're all talking about being kind to each other, but they don't know what that is. Because they don't know the God of kindness. So how could they know what kindness is? You got them advertising on TV, that is love. That is love, you know, and they're telling you what love is. The devil's dictating to you what love is through the devil vision. The television. He's dictating to you. He's teaching you what love is. But the Lord teaches us what premium love and the superior love is. It's nothing what the world calls love. The love of the world spares the rod and ruins the child. The love of the world uh, is heavily laden with excuses, and excuses are the new blood, you know? They're just so in vogue. Excuses, 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 you know? I wanted to do it, uh, but, you know, I. But, 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 that's about it. You're getting goated. You're being goated. They even have a a goat soap now, advertising on TV, goatee, goatee soap. Get your goat on. Like, hello. No, thank you. I'll just stick with the palm olive, mate. I'm right. I, I don't need the press button liquid and all the rest of it. But just get me a bar of soap, that's all I want. I don't care if it's Barilla or Sunshine. That's all I had. My mum was a beautiful looking woman. When she was a young lady, she was, whoa. And her hair shone like the noonday sun. She was no beast of burden. You know, she was no big mama. She was a good looker. And she washed her hair with Barilla soap. That was kerosene soap. And she had no problems with the hair. And she died with a full head of hair. You can say man her own mind. Died with a full head of hair. She wasn't forever plastering her face with all this, you know, fondue, fondue and all, all the rest of it, icing. She hadn't put none of that on there and she had skin like a baby. Because she didn't listen to the rubbish, oh, they promise you this and promise you that. It's a lie. You're going to get rid of the wrinkles. Liar. No, no human can get rid of wrinkles. you got wrinkles. You just need to wash your face and suck it up because they're going to stay. They'll be there tomorrow. They'll be there tomorrow until you deceive yourself again because the wrinkles never left. You just covered them with all that powder and now you look like uh, a flour factory. You look like CSR flour. Someone dropped a flour bag on your head. You know, just suck it up, accept the truth. See, it all comes back to the truth. They don't want to accept the truth. You know? They don't want to, they don't want reality. That's why they went, oh, we, we, we're going on a fantasy trip again. We're going here, going there, and, and running away. They're thinking they're going to relax. And all you do is going through airports and they're checking this, checking that, arguing with you. You can't take that in, you can't do this, you can't do that. Oh, shut up. <laughs> I'm not even going to bother going there, you know? Give me money back. And they call that a holiday. It's a, it's a hell day. That's not a holiday. Or oh, we go camping. And they spend $15,000 just buying the camping gear so they can live like a homeless person. I mean, it's just ridiculous, isn't it? It's just stupidity. They live like a homeless person. They're going out camping in the bush and they're eaten by mosquitoes, slugs and, 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 and all sorts of uh, critters annoying and the possums are coming and 
eaten all the food. And then it rains. You know, and then you get bogged and you're trying to get out. And, and someone didn't tie down the stuff on the roof racks. It falls off. And uh, then children start playing up. They want Maccas and you're 7,000 miles away from a Macca shop. You know? <laughs> and that's the world, isn't it? That's the world. Oh, it's great. Oh, I'm living my best life. <laughs> I'd hate to see your worst, if that's your best. I'm living my best life and I'm sitting in the lounge drinking a cup of tea with Jesus. And all the rest, you can have it. Have my portion. Because I am sitting there, I'm watching the world go by, I'm watching everyone trying to save the world and they can't because not even Jesus did. But yet they keep banging on about, oh, we're going to save the world, you know. And their priority is saving people, and that is not right, because the priority is Jesus. So they haven't even got that basic right. If you haven't got the basics right, how in the world are you going to have the deep? How are you going to have the meat? If you don't have the basic, they're still banging on about positive and negative. And you've got to speak positive. Look, you can speak positive till the cows come home. It ain't going to change. Why don't they speak positive? If they're, they're black and they want to be white, just speak positive. And they should turn white, shouldn't they? <laughs> if you speak positive, no, just accept yourself as you are. You're a black fella and I'm a white fella and that's it. You know what I mean? Just suck it up and move on and, and capitalise on what you got. And everyone said amen. amen. Glory to the Lord. Hey? You know what I mean down the back there? You can hear me? Yes, I hope so. <laughs> and so that's it. You know, it all comes back to that one spot again to be uh, honest with yourself. That's when we start to take ground. He guards all my bones. Do you know anyone in the world can get that guarantee? That's the world. There's the gap. The wide road people and the wide road leaders and the government leaders and the religious one world church leaders, they can't do that for you. Money can't do that for you. Hey? Money can't do that. You can own a house, but it's not necessarily a home. Hey? You can have a lot of people around you, but they're not necessarily your friend. There's all these sorts of things, you know, that we need to consider. He guards all my bones. Right? No wonder I boast in the Lord. All my bones. And yet the devil, steam, he gets in there, doesn't he? The darkness gets into the minds of people and say, you're on your own, you know, you... Then he tries to get you to gather superficial friends so that you'll feel right. I don't feel accepted. You know? You need to feel Jesus. And you won't get bogged down with that garbage. You know? Because when we come to the Lord and we're in Him, we're someone. We're not some common trash. Just like you were in the world. That's all you are, common trash in the world. And people would, oh, that's terrible. Tells his congregation that, that they're common trash. Yeah, before you're born again, you are. How do I know that? Well, Jesus said you're only worthy of hell. You're not worth anything else. He's prepared a place called hell for people like that. First birth people, they go to hell. Second birth people go to heaven, everyone said. Amen. Hey? Sorry, but yeah, no, I'm not. That's what the Lord says. I, that's what I'm going to uh, promote. What the Lord said. Because I know without, 
without any schism, without any variance, he's right. Right? That man is but vapor. Woman is but vapor at their best. And the help of man is useless. The Psalms Psalm writers say. He guards all his bones, not one of them is broken. Not one. That's like impossible. Right? No, it's just God. What God does for the righteous. Psalm thirty four twenty one Evil shall slay the wicked. Slay them. And those who hate the righteous shall be condemned. What do you think of that? Right? That's why you don't... When the Lord says, vengeance is mine, the Lord says. That's what it says here. You don't, you don't have to worry about sorting out people that hate you and come against you and plan against you and scheme against you. You don't have to bother. As a righteous child of God, in right standing with Father, we don't have to bother about that. The world do. The world do. You see that on TV every night. The under, underworld, and there, there's repercussions. You know, There's payback. Someone does something wrong to another person on the wine road, there's always uh, payback. There's going to be retaliation. They're going to come back. And they're going to dish it up. It's back and forward, back and forward. But those who hate the righteous, they shall be condemned. See? They'll end up in the fires of hell. That's why you don't... We don't scheme and hate the disciples of the Christ true disciples the brethren of the Christ thinking how we can do this and how we can do that against them and evil shall slay the wicked right they're getting what they deserve doesn't say here what these churches are saying today. God loves everyone. Does he love the evil too? Does he love the wicked? What's it say? He said, because they don't want to change, they'll be slain. Evil shall slay them when we don't want to change. And we've got Acts 3.23 uh, which says that if you don't want to listen to Jesus, Acts three twenty three, circle it in your Bible or write it down. Or, but it's good to go over these. It's that they're sobering, sobering scriptures. They keep us in line. They they remind us all the time. Look, we're not dealing with some uh, pedophile priest with a gown on. We're dealing with God Almighty. You know? When we write these scriptures down. And we go over them. And we start to see what God is. He's not some teddy bear in the sky. <laughs> a lot of people think he's a teddy bear in the sky. You know? Our oh, God understands. He does. He understands everything. He understands you're having a shot at him. You're trading on grace. And it ain't going to work. It won't work. When you're having a shot at the Lord, he won't be mocked. That's mockery. And we keep going over the same old excuses because we don't want to do something. He's, he's saying, he's just, that's outright mockery. Especially when we've been shown in the scriptures what the Lord says. That he has delivered us. 
He guards our bones. He looks out for us. He, he, he protects us. He's our avenger. He's everything. But yet then we, have, we come up with these lame excuses. <laughs> you know? I'd rather fellowship with people who love Jesus any day of the week than anyone else in the world. I don't care if they well, of my first birth family. It doesn't matter. I, just if I had the choice. I, 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 as a minister, you still got you got to bear and put up with unsaved people. But when it comes to my... Uh, liking and and the quickening in my spirit give me the people who were born of the Lord God Almighty and and love him I'd rather fellowship that is fellowship sweet rather than my first birth family who don't want to know the Lord I can't uh, be at peace around them that they grieve me because they insult my master. And that in turn affects me because they're an insult. And I'm just, I feel like a traitor if I'm to go along with them. I feel terrible. So I just have to tell it the way it is and say, look, you know, we really don't have any genuine fellowship anymore because you're on a different road. And never the twain will meet. The wide road and the narrow road are two different roads and two different character people. Totally different characters. Totally different views, ambitions, if you want to use that word. I don't like to use the word ambition. But... Totally different uh, object, uh, 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 objections. Totally different uh, in every way. So there can't really be any genuineness there. It's sort of like superficial, even hypocritical. And who wants to be a hypocrite? Those who hate the righteous shall be condemned. And then we got the final verse. 22. The Lord redeems the soul of his servant. See that? The Lord redeems the soul of his servants. And none of those who trust in him shall be condemned. None. None. Hey? We have to be a servant and we have to be uh, trusting in him to escape condemnation. Romans 8, 1. What does that say? We're going from the Old Testament to the New. Romans 8, 1. We know that scripture. Everyone knows that scripture. Hey? Romans 8, 1 talks about condemnation. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. And it, a, a lot of Bible readers don't want to see that last bit, that you need to walk according to the Spirit lest you be condemned. You can be in Christ Jesus and walk in the flesh. We know that. We, we've seen the prophets do it. We, we've seen Balaam the prophet. He knew, knew the right way. <coughs> he knew the right way, but he chose. He made an, an honest decision, heart decision, to go the wrong way. For the gain of money. 
for the sake of gain, right? cannot be. We know Esau made it a heart decision to choose the bowl of soup over his birthright. Insult, 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 mockery to God. And you see the extremity of God here. How extreme God gets. A bowl of soup over an inheritance. And it would have been a huge inheritance. But he chose a bowl of soup. A a mess of pottage. Mess of pottage. A bowl of soup. Right? Robbed him of everything. And that could be the same for us. The smallest thing can rob us of our crown. As it says in Revelation 3, 11. Let us not. Let us not let anyone steal our crown. Hey, take our crown. And let's look at that because there's a word there that really speaks to me in Revelation 3, 11. Hey? Revelation 3, 11. Let's have a look at that. Behold, I'm coming quickly. Hold fast what you have that no one may take your crown. See? You're not giving it to them. You're not giving it to them. They're taking it. See? They're stealing it. That tells me something. That tells me something you're not aware. See, if you're not giving it, they're taking it. <coughs> Without your permission. They, in other words, they've hoodwinked you. Whoever it is. They've hoodwinked you. And in the process of them hoodwinking you in a situation, you've lost your crown. Of life. You might have sided with them, thinking it was harmless. Revelation 3.11. In my Bible says, three eleven. Behold, I'm coming quickly. Hold fast what you have. And that hold fast. That's a firm grip. That's not just, you know how you hold something in your hand and it might be just like holding. I'm just holding that in my hand. But if I'm going to hold it fast, I know I'm going to get it out of my hand without a battle. Right? You've got to be prepared for the battle. You've got to hold fast to what you have. Jesus is speaking here. Not a man. This is red writing in my Bible. Hey? Behold. This, that's a word on its own, isn't it? Behold. Attention, attention everyone. Attention. He's talking to the church in Philadelphia. Hey? Even though they were sailing, they were going beautifully. The church of Philadelphia... The report was, if we read verse 7, Revelation 3, 7, And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, or the pastor, write this to the pastor. You don't write to angels, angels, you know. He would be there with him. <laughs> He's writing to the pastor, writing. You don't write on paper and give it to an angel. Can someone say amen? amen. So talk, the angel word angel means pastor. The leader of the church in Philadelphia. Listen to me. Angels are strong. They're protective. They have feathers. They protect. They're strong. They're in the high. They... 
They're beautiful people. Right? Not mongrels. Not a mongrel leader. He sucks up to people just for money. Doesn't tell them what's wrong. And they go into hell. That's not beautiful. That's a mongrel. You see your brother in sin and you don't tell him you're a mongrel. You're not even so. How can the love of Father be in you? You see your neighbour or your brother in sin and you don't tell him. What are you? So, verse 7, Revelation 3. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things says he who is holy who is true, who has the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts, shuts and no one opens. I know your works. See, I've set before you an open door, no one can shut it. For you have a little strength, you've kept my word, denied not my name, have, have not denied my name. Indeed, I'll make those of the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews and are not but lie indeed I will make them come worship before your feet and to know that I have loved you because you have kept my commandment to persevere I also will keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole earth to test those who dwell on the earth Behold, I'm coming quickly. Hold fast to what you have. Hey? Come on now. Let no one, even though this, this church, this people, had a great record, he didn't have to tell the church of Philadelphia to repent. There's no repent there. They were one of the two churches that was in right standing with God. And the other church was the church at Smyrna. And they uh, were only small. But they were in right standing with the Lord. And what comes to mind here is that the Lord still wrote a letter by the hand of John for the pastor, to encourage that pastor and to remind the pastor so he can remind the church. You be careful that no one is instrumental in you ending up in hell, even though they had a track record like that. So no one's exempt. Even though you might be going strong all Cylinders firing. You still have to be aware that the powers of darkness don't use someone to cool you off. And they might be someone close to you. To cool you off and take your crown. So we must be on the ball. We, we must... Appreciate what the Lord has done for us. We must respect, love and kiss the Lord for the great blessing he's laid on our life. To be a child of the Most High God. Right? So, when we go back to Romans 8 and verse 1. There's no condemnation when you walk according to the Holy Spirit. So you get people in churches, when you give them the truth, they say, you're trying to condemn me. I had that for years, years. You're trying to condemn me. I said, no, I'm speaking the truth and you are not in right standing with God and you're feeling condemned, just as the scripture says, because you're in the flesh. 
And that's it. And people get offended in the flesh. That's what's being offended, the flesh. That's a good thing. That's a good thing that your flesh is offended. Because that is a big warning sign. You've got to deal with this. It's something you need to deal with. You don't want to hold that grudge against that minister. In your heart. Because God knows you are. So you better sort it. They think in the world that shame is a bad thing. No, it's a God-given thing. Shame. It's something God's brought about. Right? Shame. Brings us to a place where we can bear fruit worthy of repentance. Right? You have a look at the occasions of shame. Look at the prodigal son. He was ashamed. He's ashamed of himself. He said, look at, look, at, look where I am. Look at this. And then he, he was so, so ashamed he, he couldn't face his dad. He said, I, I'm not worthy to, to even be your servant. Shame. See? That's what I need to do with these young criminals. Shame them in public. It's a good thing. Make a work of them in public. Then send them to jail. And then when they get out of jail, send them to the armed forces for 12 months or more. National service. And then have a look after all that, what sort of person they are. They might even be eligible uh, to bear fruit worthy of repentance then they can become a real man and follow the Son of Man. Amen? Amen. We're guaranteed redemption. We're guaranteed. In verse 22, Psalm 34, The Lord redeems the soul of His servants. He sets us free. That's what redeem means. Set free. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I've been redeemed. Yes. Yes, yes. I know I am. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Nothing of this world. <clears throat> Not money. I haven't been redeemed from my bestie, by my bestie or... or, or all my friends, as they say in this generation, all my friends. I've got to contact all my friends. You, have you ain't got no friend. And the one that you have, it is only one, maybe, they can't help you either because the help of man is useless. Jesus is your friend. He's your real friend. Hey? And Jesus would never side with a person that goes against a minister who speaks the truth. Never in a billion years. Because God don't side with lies or liars or compromises. He doesn't side with anyone of that nature. His eyes go to and fro across the earth seeking for the righteous. Not just any Freddy. That's why he's looking. To and fro. To and fro. You know when you're trying to find something. And you just keep looking. and You're going over and over and over and over. The same ground. Well that's like the Lord. His eyes are going to and fro across the earth. And he's looking. To find a righteous one that he may show himself strong on their behalf. Because they're few and far between. Only a remnant will be saved. 
Read that in the writings of Romans too. Romans, not chapter 2, but T double O. I'll just go over there to uh, Romans for a minute. Just bear with me. Uh, Romans chapter 9. I'm going to start reading... In verse 6. But it is not that the word of God has taken no effect. For they are not all Israel who are Israel. For they are not all Israel who are Israel. Nor are they all children because they are the seed of Abraham. But in Isaac your seed shall be called. <clears throat> that is, those who are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. But the children of the promise are counted as the seed. For this is the word of promise. At this time I will come and Sarah shall have a son. And not only this... But when Rebekah also had conceived by one man, even by our father Isaac, for the children not yet being born, nor having done as any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him who calls. It was said to her, The older shall serve the younger, as it is written, Jacob I loved, but Esau I hated. And God does hate. Hey? God does hate. Now go over to Romans 9, verse 26. And it shall come to pass in the place where it was said to them, You are not my people that they shall be called sons of the living God. Isaiah also cries out concerning Israel. Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, the remnant will be saved. Only a remnant will be saved. For he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness... Because the Lord will make a short work upon the earth. And as Isaiah said before, unless the Lord of Sabaoth had left us a seed, we would have become all homosexuals. We would have all become like Sodom and we would have been made like Gomorrah. We'd all be LGBTQ. If he didn't leave the seed, and the seed is Jesus. Right? We're all born out of him. Right? But, I like what it says in Romans 9. And the verse is 6. But it is not that the word of God has taken no effect. For they are not all Israel who are Israel. Nor are they all children because they are the seed of Abraham. They were born Jews in the flesh. But in Isaac your seed shall be called. That is, those who are the children of the flesh. Whether you're a Jew or whether you're a Gentile, the children of the flesh aren't his. That's the wide road people. They're the children of the flesh. Born of the flesh, sister. Born of the flesh. That is, those who are 
that, that is, those who are children, this is verse 8, Romans 9, of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted as the same. Okay? The children of promise. Okay? Think about it. If the Lord never left the seed, if he never left the word, how can we be saved? How can we be born of Jesus who came through uh, supposedly the lineage of Isaac? Amen? Amen. So it's Isaac, Jesus, us. All good seed if we're born of Jesus. But only a remnant of Jews. Remnant. And a remnant of Gentiles. Not everyone that says, I'm a Christian, is a Christian. Okay? Not everyone that says, oh, oh, not all Israel are Israel. They look like Jews. Oh, they've got candelabras in their house. Oh, they wear blue and white shirts. Well, so did Mother Teresa. She wore blue and white, didn't she? Does that make her a Jew? Or even a child of God? No. But I go to Israel every year. I give $10. That won't save you. So let's finish up today and we'll go to uh, the writings of um, Romans again. There's a great gap between the narrow road and the wide road. Romans chapter 2. Come on now. You know, we're more Jew than the Jew. We don't have pigtails and a pork pie hat. We don't wear black and white. Right? We don't take our trips on LSD. We're not an oaky from the stoky. Romans 2.29 He is a Jew. Ooh. He is a Jew who is one inwardly, inwardly, not of the flesh, inwardly. That's a Jew. That, what they mean here is he is a Jew. <clears throat> He's a true child of God, true worshipper of God, who's one inwardly. And circumcision is that of the heart. In the spirit, you see, the word, the sword, the scalpel has done the work in the heart and cut off all the fat and rubbish and gristle of the world and the first birth. It's all gone. Look at this beautiful, fresh heart that's for the Lord. With, and it's got written on it, Jesus as preeminent. But he is a Jew who is one inwardly and circumcision is that of the heart. Inwardly. In the spirit. Not in the letter. Not Judaic teaching. Not Roman Catholicism. Not Mormonism or Moronism. Not oneness. Not once saved, always saved letters. No, spirit. Spirit. Whose praise is not from men and women, but from God. Their praise is from God. And that's made known clearly. Right? God shows his praises on his men and, and the world is in turmoil and they're working around the clock and they still can't pay their bills, but here's the preacher. He's sweet. Everything's covered. Eh? My praise is from God. Not from sweat of the toil, sweat of the brow, 
My praise is from God. He praises. Hey? That's how he shows. Everything's sweet. That the Lord is my shepherd. Because I have no one. He lays me down in the green paddocks and in the hardest of times. Amen. Because the world is out there and they're trusting, see? They're trusting in the works of their hands. They're trusting in their own labour. They're trusting in their own slog. You know? Oh, Jesus didn't do nothing for me. I built this house with these hands. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, you wouldn't have even got out of bed to have your vitabrits, mate, without breath in your lungs. So you need to go and see Jesus and apologise now. Because without breath in your lungs, you're not even going to say, Violet crumble bar. <laughs> you ain't going to do nothing. Because I've seen people without breath in their lungs and they were dead. So today, we finished up on Psalm 34. And, but there's still more kisses. There's still more kisses to come. More blessings to come. So we press on next week. And we go to Kiss 45. 45th Battalion, eh? <laughs> what a Lord we serve, hey? What a wonderful Saviour. What a wonderful saviour is Jesus, my Lord. What a wonderful saviour is he, he hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock. And I'm righteous and holy in him, oh yes, I'm righteous and holy in him, our Lord Jesus. The other day when we got the new brochure, I went down, downtown, downtown. I went downtown and there's a, a bloke sitting there having a cuppa with his mate. And I walked up to him and I said, God bless you, brother. What's this about, about Jesus? I said, look at the timing. How did I know you're gonna be wearing that jumper today? And the colour of his jumper was all the colours on this brochure. And he said, well, exactly. And this come out today for you. And his mate was sitting there and I said, oh, no, we won't have you fighting. You have one too. <laughs> hey? Then I had a man... Strange days indeed, you know, most peculiar, Mama. Knocking on my door yesterday. You keep on knocking, but you can't come in. You keep on knocking, but you can't come in. And I opened the door, and I said, yes, he said, I've seen you riding around. Gee, I like your bike. Sounds great. Are they Vance and Hines pipes? Yes. You wouldn't be able to tell me where I could uh, find a, a bike club I could join and ride with, eh? Getting a brand new Harley next Tuesday. Hey? And uh, we just got talking, you know? And it was a golden opportunity that the Lord brought him there to receive the new brochure, you know? And to receive a booklet of my testimony... And uh, also a card. So it wasn't in vain. And then he was saying he used to play gridiron. And I said, oh, I see that fellow there, Brother Osara, he, he used to play gridiron. Oh, right. I said, he, he's an island boy too. Because this guy was half mouldy, half Samoan. And... Uh, he loves his tucker, he said. I said, well, you're on a good wicket here because Brother Sarah, he don't mind his tucker. Hey? And you both ride and you're both islanders. 
So you've got something happening here. But you see how the Lord does things, you know. I don't, I've never laid eyes on that man in my life, but, you know. He'd seen me riding out, he heard the bike, seen the bike, showing forth the praises of him that brought me out of the darkness. And next minute he's knocking on my door. Right? Wanting counsel. Come on. We just got to trust in the Lord. He's doing this. He, he's sorting this. You ain't going to save anyone. You know, he's the saviour and you're the soldier. Hey? Soldiers and servants, ambassadors and chains. As we ponder on the calling that's been placed upon our name. Road ahead looks hopeless, full of stench and steam. But I know with the master... I've got the victory. And everybody said, Amen. Glory to the Lamb, mate. Thank you, Jesus.